right, folks, welcome back. Got another uh, little tutorial here we're going to do using our basic image we colored in our last complete tutorial. Uh, this one we're going to talk a little bit about textures. Um, if you are new to coloring, uh, you may at some point um, drive somebody crazy by pulling one of these numbers on them got a really cool looking piece of art here and you decide to go ahead and uh, say throw up a big brick wall behind your uh, comic book character which you might think looks kinda cool but really ends up coming off kinda cheesy um, because your styles don't match here you've got a really cool looking character and then you got a texture back there that just doesn't have anything to do with the picture and for some reason a lot of people use the brick wall which is why I use the brick wall on here but um, never ever 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 do this however it is possible to use texture successfully if you're careful um, so for this tutorial here we're going to use a stock leather texture uh, also remember too that you if you're going to use a texture, you must have one that is that either you've paid for or that's royalty free, or you can't use it professionally. Um, meaning, if you make money off it, you got to pay the people that you used it from. So, um, I suggest using some free resources. Uh, a really great one is Bitbox, uh, B I T T B O X, Bitbox.com. They have a lot of great textures and free resources um, on that site, and that's where I get a lot of mine. So, I definitely recommend them. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to jazz up our hero's uniform a little bit using this leather texture. Um, now one thing that you're going to want to pay attention to is that wherever you put this, you're going to want to make it kind of conform to your character's body. So in your edit command, you have a if you have a newer version of Photoshop, in transform you have a command called warp. And what we're going to be able to do with that is we're going to be able to kind of mold this texture specifically to the character. Just by using these little points here. And there are definitely a lot of uh, commands or a lot of tutorials. Uh, out there on the warp command I'm sure so mm -hmm. definitely hit up some of those if you want to know more about it but all we're looking for really here is to kind of cover the image a little bit this is kind of a flat texture and I'm going to do the same thing with the arms here a feathered brush to just kind of erase out some of the um, extra because with this command they're about to try to use here you don't have to have it perfect you just have to have kind of the basic hint and it's actually better if it's sort of a little uh, faded out in your highlight areas down as I go to save time here. Add another one here. Don't really have to do much with this one. Um, if you're going to be adding some real detailed texturing that you really need the contours for, I definitely recommend pasting in very small amounts and warping each piece. Uh, because it's going to pay off big time in the long run. It's going to make the look uh, the, of, of the work a lot more authentic. 
authentic. Um, we're almost done here. Again, just going into that warp command. Stretching things out a bit. And erasing out anything that I don't need. Don't really need to do much with this one. And there we go, we have what for right now looks absolutely terrible. Um, but we're going to work on that. Another mistake a lot of people make when they're trying to apply textures is they'll put them on top of things and then just kind of try to kind of fade out their opacity to try to make it blend. Um, and the thing is, that's close to what you're looking for, but it's not what you're looking for. Uh, we, we have a better way of doing this. Um, what you have to do is you have to get comfortable with your layers properties here. Uh, there are this many different ways you can um, blend a layer into your work. On normal it stands alone on its own. Then you have all these other effects. Here's a dissolve effects that spreads out and um, sort of um, trickles the color outward. Uh, you have a darken effect which makes the, uh, the layer darker than the rest. And then of course you have multiply which carries it through every channel and every other layer. Uh, you have like a color burn that actually burns the color behind the texture to make the work um, appear as if you had shaded it individually, which actually isn't that bad. Um, you have dodge, which is of course the opposite. Again, not bad. You have lighten, screen, but the one we're looking for here is overlay. What overlay does is it preserves um, all of your um, textures you already have uh, on your original coloring and it just kind of blends in the texture that you're pasting on top into it. Now there are some places where you don't really want it like here we have the logo. Uh, probably want to keep that to that gray where we had it. Don't really need an extra texture on that. But with a very simple procedure here, we added some pretty cool um, texture into the design of the, the uniform, and it looks pretty natural because it's still got our original colors underneath. So again, that was just applying a new layer with the texture that you're looking for, and then using the blending mode overlay. And uh, again, we're going to go back to normal. And just by clicking overlay, you see the effect that we get there. So you have um, his normal uniform and his overlay uniform. Big difference now there. So that's a positive way that you can use textures in your uh, in your work. So don't be afraid of them. Um, I always, of course, discourage people from using textures, but if you use them the right way, you can create some pretty cool effects, and that is one of them. So. Hope you got a little bit out of that. If you have any specific questions, leave me a note at overgroundcomics.deviantart.com or simply uh, leave a comment on this page right here. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.